layers of the Earth and their characteristics. Our planet Earth is too big to be studied in its entire structure and composition, so in order to study the structure of our planet, its composition and characteristics, the simplest thing is to divide it into large layers or spheres. In turn, these huge spheres are subdivided into other layers. In this video we are going to see what the layers of the Earth are and their characteristics. What are the layers of the Earth? The layers of the Earth can be divided into four layers or spheres. Geosphere, also known as lithosphere. Hydrosphere. Biosphere. Atmosphere. None of these layers are independent of each other, but are interconnected and dependent on each other. Among them they differ in their composition and characteristics, such as their temperature, which is higher the closer it gets to the inner core of the Earth, due to the increase in pressure. The structure and composition of these four terrestrial spheres is studied by geology. Knowing this is important to find out the evolution of our planet. It also studies the natural resources and processes that impact the Earth's surface. Characteristics of the Atmosphere, one of the layers of the Earth. We are going to analyze the layers of the Earth and their characteristics, focusing on the atmosphere, since it constitutes the most extensive layer of the planet. It reaches up to 10,000 kilometers thick and is a fundamentally gaseous layer. The main gases in its composition are nitrogen, oxygen, and to a lesser extent ozone, carbon dioxide and water vapor. We can divide, in turn, the atmosphere into the following layers. Troposphere, this is the bottom layer of the atmosphere. It is in contact with the surface of the Earth and climatic and meteorological phenomena take place there, since clouds, winds and water vapor are concentrated there. It is made up of nitrogen, oxygen, and water vapor. It reaches an approximate height of 10 kilometers, and as it moves away from the surface of the Earth, the pressure and density of the air decrease. Stratosphere, this layer is made up of inorganic elements, such as sulfuric acid, ozone, nitric acid, nitrogen oxide or halogenated compounds. It is a layer that presents a cold and heavy air. The ozone layer is located in its outer part and is the one that acts as a filter or shield against the ultraviolet radiation of the sun that was not absorbed in the thermosphere. Mesosphere This layer protects the Earth from the impact of meteorites and asteroids. It is formed by a mixture of different gases, so it does not present a stratification like other layers of the atmosphere. Ionosphere or thermosphere, this cata is formed by gases from different chemical ionization processes, such as carbon dioxide, oxygen, or nitrogen, for this reason it is also called ionosphere. This layer is very important, since it is the one that absorbs most of the sun's radiation, such as ultraviolet radiation. Exosphere, this is the transitional layer between the atmosphere and the outer space that surrounds it, where neither gases nor gravity exist. It is the least dense layer of the atmosphere and is made up of helium and hydrogen. In this layer are several of the artificial satellites that orbit the Earth. Characteristics of the Biosphere This layer extends from 3 meters below ground to 30 meters above and is made up of all the living beings that inhabit the planet, such as animals, unicellular organisms or plants. This extension was proposed because it is where most living organisms live. In oceans and areas, most aquatic organisms live from the surface to approximately 200 meters deep, where light is already scarce and pressure is very high. However, there are also living organisms that live outside these ranges. For example, some birds fly in some situations up to 7,000 meters above sea level, some marine species have been found living at a depth of 6,000 meters in the Mariana Trench, or microorganisms that live far beyond these ranges in really extreme conditions. We can divide the whole of the biosphere into different biomes, which are the habitats where species of plants and animals live together. Examples of biomes are deserts, with their sand, cacti and lizards, or coral reefs. Characteristics of the hydrosphere The hydrosphere is not a defined layer as such, but the field of geology is known as the hydrosphere to the set of circulating water deposits and water that exists on the surface of our planet Earth, both on the continents and outside them. This encompasses seas, lakes, groundwater, rivers, ice, snow, and oceans. These liquid water deposits occur only on planet Earth, which is the only planet in the solar system that presents them, that we know of at the moment, 
which makes it conducive to life as we know it. Two-thirds of the surface of our planet Earth is covered by water, which makes a total of approximately 1,400 trillion liters. However, this distribution is not equitable among all the loops of water that exist, but its distribution is given as follows. Oceans, the oceans represent the largest part of the Earth's surface, specifically it is 93.96% of the total. Groundwater, these are the waters found below the surface of the Earth, in the soil and in the subsoil, between the interstices of rocks, such as in aquifers. In total they represent approximately 4.12% of the total. Inland waters and glaciers, represents 1.65% of the total. Reservoirs and lakes, they are a minority part of the hydrosphere. They represent only 0.019% of the total. Atmospheric humidity, it only represents 0.001% of the total water. River water, they represent 0.0001% of the total. Depending on where that water is located and its state, its ability to renew itself and rate of change will vary. In its water vapor state, it is completely renewed about 34 times per year and completely leaves the atmosphere in about 10 days. In contrast, the water in the oceans takes about 3,700 years to completely renew itself. The hydrosphere is in continuous movement and change, thus creating a water cycle or water cycle on Earth. In this cycle, the terrestrial water evaporates, precipitates and freezes periodically, depending on the pressure and temperature of each region. This cycle is a fundamental part of life on this planet, the precipitation of water wets the soil and encourages rivers and streams of water, which evaporates and keeps the air humid, which returns to precipitate, and so on cyclically. In the coldest regions of the planet, such as Antarctica, water solidifies as ice. In the state of gas or water vapor, water is found in the loops of warm or thermal air that emit steam, in the highest clouds, those that reach the atmosphere, and in fog. Geosphere, another layer of the Earth. We ended up getting to know the layers of the Earth and their characteristics by talking about the geosphere. It encompasses the layers that form the solid part of the planet. Like other planets, Earth is made up of different types of rocky materials with different dynamics between them. Many of these rocky materials have been formed during convulsive geological stages of volcanic activity. Some of these rocks are dated to about 4.4 billion years ago. The geosphere is studied by geologists and other specialists through soil exploration, especially in those places where the lower strata may outcrop due to different terrain accidents. Many of these observations are not measured directly, but through approximation formulas. Its structure can be studied from a chemical or geological point of view. From a chemical point of view, the geosphere is divided into three layers, which from the outside in are Crust, the crust extends from the surface to 35 kilometers deep and is the surface rock stratum on which life develops and with a relatively thin thickness that reaches an average density of 3 g cm 3 This layer also includes seabeds and deep depressions. It is formed mainly by silicate rocks of different elements. Mantle, extends from 35 to 2,890 kilometers deep. It is the thickest layer and is made up of silicious rocks, with a higher iron content than the crust. The greater the depth of the mantle, the greater the pressure and temperature, to reach a semi-solid state that allows the movement of the tectonic plates in earthquakes. Due to pressure, the upper layer of the mantle has more movement and is less viscous than the lower layer. Core, extends from 2,890 to 6,371 kilometers deep. It is the innermost part of the planet and the densest materials are located there. We can divide it in turn into the outer core, up to 5,150 kilometers, and the inner core, up to 6,371 kilometers, and is made up of up to 80% iron and nickel and other minor materials, such as lead. From a geological point of view it can be divided into the lithosphere, up to 100 kilometers deep, which is the most solid part, the asthenosphere, up to 400 kilometers deep, with more ductile materials, the mesosphere, up to 2,890 kilometers, which is corresponds to the mantle, and the endosphere, up to 6,371 kilometers, which corresponds to the core part. 